All right, folks, come on down and meet the hottest male model in town. He's got prominent cheekbones, eyes that could make white walkers jealous, and he's a convicted felon. Wait. What? That's right, y'all. This is Jeremy Meeks, otherwise known as Hot Felon. His mugshot went viral in 2014, and while he was serving a 27-month sentence for gun possession, he'd committed some other crimes before. He was discovered by Jim Jordan and signed to White Cross Management. Meeks made his New York Fashion Week debut in February of 2016, walking for designers like Tommy Hilfiger and Philip Klein, to name a couple. Now, if Jeremy isn't your type, if you're looking for someone with a bit more melanin or, you know, a little younger, someone with a slightly shorter rap sheet, then Makai Alante Lucky is your man. 20-year-old Makai Alante Lucky, who was arrested back in 2016 for allegedly speeding and driving a stolen vehicle, is being dubbed Prison Bay by the internet. He, too, had a mugshot go viral, got a modeling career, and also walked for Philip Klein. Is he like a progressive designer or something? Now those two men look very different, but they have one really important thing in common. Criminal rap sheets? Yes, but no. At least one blue eye? Yes, and you're getting closer. They're both hot! Hello and welcome slash welcome back to my channel. My name is Khadija, your favorite internet play auntie. Hello to all my returning nieces, nephews, and nibblings. If you're new, feel free to take a look around. I sit on my floor, I talk about any and everything, usually, you know, social commentary. I sometimes talk with my friends and sometimes I do video essays and today is one of those times. Today we're going to be talking about pretty privilege. What it is, who has it, the perks you receive if you're part of the PPC, pretty people crew, and why some people are so reluctant to admit that this is a thing that could exist. This concept will be loosely dissected through the biopsychosocial model, and if you don't know what that is, check out my cuffing season video. In the first part, I'll be defining what pretty privilege is and explaining from a biological standpoint what makes someone attractive. In the second part, I'll dip into the psychological reasons pretty privilege might exist. In the third part, I'll talk about the social benefits pretty people get in this world. And in the fourth part, I'm going to contradict myself by explaining why pretty privilege might not be a real thing at least the way we define it. And as always, I'll have a final part with my closing remarks. I also just wanna say that this is a very broad topic in my eyes and there's a lot to talk about. So I'm actually gonna do a full debrief in my Friday video and talk more about the social significance of a concept like this and who gets left out of these conversations of beauty. Look at you. You're black, you're poor, you're ugly, you're a woman, you're nothing at all. If you're not a cis, white, able-bodied male and don't fit into Eurocentric beauty ideas, that one's for you. Should I have gone into ASMR? We'll talk more Friday. Where is the beautiful girl? Uh, my granddaughter, Amelia. <laughs> she is gorgeous. Let us take a closer look. Pretty privilege is defined as the social advantages, often unearned, that benefit people who are perceived as pretty or considered beautiful. And there's no mincing words here. That's a pretty self-explanatory definition. Those of us who are lucky to be seen as beautiful have access to a world of privilege that brings advantages you may not have ever had to work for, and the ignorance to act like you got it all on merit. And we've all heard it before. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And maybe that's true, but I think it gives a lot of us way more agency than we might actually have. What I mean by that is there are studies that show that some facial features are just attractive no matter what a person's racial or ethnic background is. In a paper by Gillian Rhodes titled The Evolutionary Psychology of Facial Beauty, Rhodes set out to assess the appeal of three candidates for biologically based preferences in attraction. Those preferences are averageness, symmetry, and sexual dimorphism. And again, that's feminine traits in females and masculine traits in males. The language is very gendered. 
Rhodes notes that for a long time, the social sciences believed that standards of beauty were attributed to cultural conventions, but suggests that through observation, those three preferences may actually be a part of our biological rather than our cultural heritage. A lot of other studies evaluate averageness and symmetry as rules of attraction. My name is not Richard. Well, th then what is it? Dick. What? Dick. You heard me. <laughs> And as we talked about last week when discussing tweakments, surgeons explained that they would do work on men's jawlines, chins, and necks to make them look more masculine, and more work on women's cheekbones and softening the jawline to make them look more feminine. All of these guidelines for attraction look at the broader idea that at our most basic level, people are attracted to signs of health and fertility. But pretty privilege isn't just about being a desirable mate. I said so many things. Like You're perfect, you're beautiful, them. you look like Linda Evangelista, you're a model. She doesn't even, she can walk out there in a f diaper. And they're like, Valentina, your smile is beautiful. Like I said, from an evolutionary standpoint, good looks are a sign of health and fertility. With that in mind, it only makes sense that those biological factors would bleed into the psychological factors that have most of us thinking that to be beautiful is to be trustworthy, talented, and an overall good person. I get very scared, but you know, he's also really dreamy. And as the great Sappho said herself, what is beautiful is good. So it has to be true, right? Yeah. Come on, y'all. Think what you're thinking, brain. That is just another bias we've been conditioned into, and it's called the halo effect. Besides, that's not even the whole quote. The halo effect is a cognitive bias that claims that positive impressions of people, brands, and products in one area positively influence our feelings in another area. Why does this happen? Well, we're not all stubborn Tauruses, but we are all biased. As humans, we don't just use objective reasoning to inform our impressions of others. We use what we already know and make an image that works well within our own minds. If we relate that back to attraction, it makes sense that if you're constantly told good looking person equals good person, you would continue to consciously and unconsciously feed that bias. Even the term good looking. Also, I be telling y'all about aesthetics. We all out here haloing everyone, using one thing as a proxy for assuming how good someone is. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. But for real, this bias is seen everywhere and all the time. People will believe someone is a decent person because they're decent looking. Or worse, excuse someone's terrible behavior just because they're hot. Y'all really said that. Ah. I hate it here. Take me to the window. I wish to say goodbye. Now, let's talk about all the fun ways Pretty Privilege rears its ugly head. <laughs> get it? <laughs> because it's pretty, but then it's ugly. <laughs> you get me. You get me. Jackson, from the very start, my lawyer's gut, it told me you must be innocent. It said, no man with pecs like that could be guilty. <laughs> Social beauty standards, or should I say the nuances of them, seem to change with the times. In the 50s, everybody wanted to look like Marilyn. In the 80s, we were all about getting fit. In the 90s, people wanted to look like waif-thin models. In the 2000s, we were all about health. And for some reason, low-rise jeans. I lied. I don't know what our beauty standards were about in the 2000s. Like, what? what may maybe interracial dynamics? Oh my god, did they date? What? And now, it's racially ambiguous Instagram models with impossibly small waists, big booties, and the perfect Instagram face. But with every new iteration of beauty standards comes the same benefits of preferential treatment. In a study by Tanya Rosenbalt of Wason University and Marcus Mobius of Harvard called Why Beauty Matters, Rosenbalt and Mobius claimed that they could identify three channels through which physical attractiveness raised an employer's estimates of a worker's ability. The confidence channel, and the visual and oral stereotypes channel. Through citing other studies, this study talked about the connection of confidence and beauty and how the physical attractiveness stereotype of attraction correlates to intelligence, social skills, and health. 
and it can become a self-fulfilling prophecy. That's called the kernel of truth hypothesis. And according to that, teachers will give more attention to better looking kids because they believe they'll outperform in school. Explains a lot, Khadija. This preferential treatment in turn builds confidence as well as social and communication skills. And in the labor market, those skills are keys to success. Those skills are keys to higher wages. Bring the guns out. Bring the guns out. Economists examining U.S. and Canadian samples have found that attractive individuals get paid on average 12 to 14 percent more than their unattractive co-workers. In the criminal justice system, the researchers found that handsome men had received significantly lighter sentences. In fact, Attractive defendants were twice as likely to avoid jail as unattractive defendants. This doesn't mean they didn't go to jail, but like, you know, they were likely to avoid it, but I'm not saying, I don't know how big the pool of people is. And I'm not done, because this bias is also seen in politics. Oh, that reminds me our Prime Minister is hot. Oh, Canada! A study of the 1974 Canadian federal elections found that attractive candidates received more than two and a half times as many votes as unattractive candidates. And in a study analyzing the appearance-based effects of the U.S. House of Representatives 2016 elections, researchers found that attractiveness positively affected the vote share, whereas perceived likability and competence played no role. So we have a few examples of how being better looking just makes you better off in the world. And I guess we're done. We're done. Yeah. Yo, what kind of commentary channel would I be? Huh? What kind would I be if I didn't present all the information to you, then go on and dissect it? Huh? Come on. I'm pretty. What? And my family. I'm the pretty one. My eyes and my smile and my family treated me like I'm pretty. They expected nothing from me. Ever. Never pushed me, never thought to. Okay. Now we know being deemed conventionally attractive gives you certain benefits in life, but is it really a privilege? If we look at the actual definition, Privilege is defined as a right, immunity, or benefit enjoyed by a particular person or a restricted group of people beyond the advantages of most. Looking at it from that angle, you can definitely benefit from being attractive in terms of crime and punishment, but beauty doesn't grant someone the right to murder people and not face any repercussions. You can benefit in the job market by being more attractive, but Beauty doesn't grant anyone immunity from being sexually harassed or assaulted at work. Are you hitting on me? You're a beautiful girl. <sighs> so everything you just said? I'm a man who knows what he wants. Or anywhere for that matter. I mean, Rihanna is a beautiful person and that did not stop Chris Brown from doing what he did. It just had other people coming out of the woodwork saying really dumb things about letting him do the same thing because he was hot. And we all know that Jay-Z tried it with Beyonce. Beyonce? Beyonce! Calling it a privilege implies that you not only get benefits, but that you're protected from facing the ugly realities of this world. And that's just not true. Beauty does not give you immunity from everything or the right to anything. And I'm not trying to downplay the evidence that I just spent most of this essay presenting to you, but I am working on being impeccable with my word and think that there's a difference between privilege and benefits. Another reason I, and I think other people that are opposed to this concept have a hard time saying it's outright privilege is because beauty is more than anything a commodity. And like most commodities, it's used to further advance a capitalistic agenda that cares more about earnings than the human beings attached to those labels. Like how blackness is a commodity. I'm not saying every single person thinks this way, but there are people out there that do not care about black people. They care about the money they can make off of black culture. And that goes for beauty. Another, another reason pretty privilege 
or benefit is difficult for some people to talk about is because we have a very bootstraps mentality about work ethic in the Western world, specifically in nations that praise masculinity, which is like every nation, damn. There are many sources that prove that this kind of thinking doesn't work and that anyone wanting to succeed in this world needs work ethic, but also needs help. That aside, because of this romanticized lie of a really strong work ethic and just doing what needs to be done all by yourself, being told that anything is handed to us and not earned rubs people the wrong way. Another, another, another final reason pretty privilege is a reluctant title for a lot of us to hold on to is because most of us don't fit into the conventional prototypes of attraction embedded in this cishet, heteronormative, ableist, ageist, white supremacist world. <sighs> I'm not trying to be dramatic in using all those $50 words, but I don't care what the scientists say. I regretted it as soon as I said it, but not enough to edit it out. <laughs> Certain things make most people across the board conventionally attractive, but a lot more of us are attractive for our own unique beauty aesthetics. And if we don't define beauty the way the invisible powers that be do, or the way the beauty industry does, then yeah, pretty benefits exist on the macro, but on the micro in our everyday lives, maybe not as much. Oh, the true beauty oh, thing is and I have a right to show my color, dolly. No, no, I am beautiful no, no, and I know no, I'm beautiful. No, no, Taking the wrong no, way, shit, no, she no, looked no, bad. No, and no way of what you they can do about it. I hated this. I think pretty people get advantages in this world and the research proves it, but knowing what I now know, I can't fully call it privilege. Am I drunk? What? That did not, mm, I had a glass before this. Being beautiful is just this like weird conundrum. Like it's both explainable by science, but also not with evolving beauty standards. It's both an advantage and a disadvantage. It's something that people believe makes your life easier, but it's also something some people refuse to admit even affects them. In that study that I talked about with the 1974 Canadian election, 73% of voters denied like with, with purpose and intention that they had even considered someone's looks when they were voting for them. Also, the reason I just hated this was because it's just a conversation that leaves a lot of people out that don't fit into a certain box. But like I said, we'll talk about that on Friday. Anyway, thank you so, so much for watching. If you made it to the end to witness my last <laughs> semi, I don't think I'm pretty, I think I'm still being articulate, but like I, I really did chug that. Ooh, what was I even saying? Thank you for making it to the end. <laughs> oh my God, I need to stop filming. <laughs> There are a few links below. Oh, the link is about to take over. There are a few links below if y'all are interested in reading. It's not all the sources that I use, but it's just a few that I think are pretty cool. And some of the studies that I talked about. There's also a really good channel called Quove Studio. They talk a lot about beauty and attraction and way more sciencey about this stuff because honestly, some of this jargon goes right over my head, but very good, help me out with this, so check them out or him out. Oh boy, oh boy, wow, I usually don't do that when I'm filming these because it's a lot of words that I gotta know, but here we are. <laughs> Ooh boy, I don't remember what I was saying. I'm not that cheap usually, damn, damn. Uh, it's because it was so fast, it was so fast. Okay, oh my God, Um, have a wonderful rest of your week water your plants, feed your pets, do all the great things. And remember that you can always change your mind because you can. Because you can, you can always change your mind because you can, you can always change, always change your mind. Who is she? Who is she? <laughs> see us a frow. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm done. I'm done. I will see y'all. Subscribe, like, subscribe, you know, do the things. <laughs> and I will see y'all in the rest of this. I promise my life usually is not this chaotic. Oh my God. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Girl, what?